Do you ever get that clunk when you push the clutch down? I'm not talking about lifting the clutch up. If you want to know how to lift the clutch up smoothly, I'll leave a link to a video up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. I'm talking about you're driving along, you push the clutch down to change gear, but a clanging sound comes from your engine and a jolt goes through the car. It's quite common actually, but there is an easy solution. Push the clutch down quickly. And I mean like judo chop quickly. I'm gonna try and demonstrate now using this electronic screwdriver with a skateboard wheel. This represents your engine and this skateboard wheel represents your clutch. When your clutch is up, they're connected and they spin as one. When you push the clutch down, you separate them. The trouble is, if you push the clutch down slowly, you don't separate them cleanly and there can be a slippage stage where they can actually reconnect and cause a jolt to go through the car. So I'm pushing the clutch down slowly, they're slipping, they reconnect, and then finally they're disconnected. And it's that reconnection that causes that jolt. The problem is compounded by the fact your clutch pedal has a long travel. From top to bottom, I'd say it's about that. But under your bonnet, the clutch only actually moves by a few millimeters. So it's important to get the clutch down quickly and suddenly to separate the clutch from the engine quickly without any intermediate slippage stage and therefore a jolt. When I say get the clutch down quickly, I mean this quick. Usually when I ask pupils to press the clutch down quickly, they press it at about this speed, which is not fast enough. You don't have to smash the top of the pedal and try and smash it into the ground. You can get your foot ready, and as long as you're quick for the middle 90%, like so, that should be fine. I didn't even make it down to the floor there. There's still a little bit left. That tiny little bit at the end doesn't really matter. Now, I'll show you in practice. So clutch down first gear, hand brake off, a little bit of gas and bite point. There's no one coming. So I'm gonna to go to second gear soon. Clutch ready, clutch down quick, and then into second. That was very smooth. Clutch up carefully so that it's smooth. Clutch ready again for gear three. Clutch down quick, and then into third. It is possible to press the clutch down slowly and be smooth, but you need to know what you're doing with the gas pedal. If the car is slowing down and you're off the gas pedal, you can usually get away with pressing the clutch down slowly while still being smooth. But bear in mind, when you come off the gas pedal, the car doesn't start slowing down straight away. There is a delay before it starts to react. So give it a moment, make sure it's slowing down, then you can press the clutch slowly. This is the easiest way to drive. It's good for beginners who are just trying to learn how to operate the car but it does mean you slow down quite a bit between gear changes. If you don't want to slow down between gear changes, you can actually press the clutch down when you're still on the gas, but make sure you only have a small amount of gas because if you have a lot, it's still going to be jerky and the revs are going to go flying up when your clutch gets down. You still need to come off the gas immediately after the clutch is down or the revs will go up. This is a tricky method, but you don't slow down between gear changes. I don't recommend this for beginners, but it is a reliable method that works in all cars. And if you're good at it, it means you can drive most cars smoothly. However, if you're using the seesaw method, when you clutch down and come off the gas at the same time, that's when it's imperative to press the clutch down quickly. Many people believe they do the seesaw method, but when I watch them, they're actually doing the clutch down off gas method. It's just that it's so close together, which it should be, that it, they think they're doing it at exactly the same time, but they're not. The clutch is going down slightly before they're coming off the gas. But as a new driver learning, the seesaw method is actually quite easy when it comes to getting to grips with driving the car smoothly without slowing down too much between gear changes. You just have to be quick pressing that clutch down to make sure there's no jolt. The reason why you're more likely to get a jolt during the seesaw method is because as you reduce power, the clutch is less likely to slip. So if you're pressing the clutch down slowly and it starts to slip and you reduce power, it will be more likely to lock up again with the engine and that will send a jolt through the car. Here's an example of coming off the gas and then pressing the clutch down. So let's get moving. This is great for beginners who are just starting out. Just want to give them some confidence 
when it comes to driving a manual car. So come off the gas, car starts slowing, clutch down, don't have to press it down quick, got time to change gear. They're a learner, so they're taking a long time. This is the first time they've ever done it. Bringing the clutch up, giving a little bit of gas when the clutch is about halfway up near the bike point and then carrying on. Took a long time, but they will take a long time. They're new to driving. I now have a magpie in the way. I'm sure it will move out the way they usually do. So the learner's going faster again. And now they're fast enough to change gear. They'll come off the gas, the car will start slowing. They'll press the clutch down, inevitably quite slowly. And then they'll think, where's the gear stick? Well, let's move this to third. There it is in the middle, forwards. Bring the clutch up slowly. When they're about halfway and they feel that bite point, add a bit of gas. Go check my mirrors, go around this other learner. All these learners getting in the way. And see, I don't mean you're gonna do that for the rest of your life, but it's a good way to start. It's an easy way to get into manual. And now for the method that requires more experience, which is clutch down, then off gas. It really is close. It looks like you're pretty much doing it at the same time. So, clutch ready, clutch down, then off gas. You see my clutch does actually go down before I come off the gas. It doesn't reach the floor, but it gets most of the way down. So ready, clutch down, then off gas. And you don't have to be quick. Now I know I'm doing it quick, but when you do it that way, you can actually be slower. So I'll do it again, clutch down, then off gas. But generally with experience, you will be doing it a little bit quicker. Go a little bit faster, clutch ready, clutch down, then off gas. When you're doing the clutch down, then off gas method, it is so close that there's usually a bit of an overlap. There's usually a little bit of a seesaw in there anyway, but the clutch does go most of the way down before you release the gas. I'm now gonna demonstrate the seesaw method. Most experienced drivers think they're using this method, but when I watch them, they're actually getting the clutch most of the way down before they come off the gas. This method is good for a more experienced learner who wants to speed up their gear changes without slowing down every time they're changing gear. It's quite an easy method. So, select first, let's get going. Moving away, I'm a more experienced learner now, clutch ready, clutch down and off the gas quickly together. Into second, a little bit of bite point, a little bit of gas so it's smooth. And I'll accelerate again, getting ready for the next gear change, covering the clutch clutch down and off the gas together at the same time. Change the gear, find the bite point, a little bit of gas, and carry on. You'll find that when you're lifting the clutch, you're gonna to have to probably hold it on the bite point and add gas, because as a learner, you're not gonna do it quick enough to catch the revs before they've dropped too low. Accelerating again now, getting ready for the next gear change. Clutch ready, clutch down and off the gas together, into fourth, a little bit of bite point, a little bit of gas, and I barely slow down at all. A nice, easy and smooth method. If you want to know how to bring the clutch up quickly after a gear change, without being jerky and without slowing down the car, I actually have a video all about it. And I'll leave a link to it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. It's important not to use the seesaw method under hard acceleration or you're gonna jolt everyone forwards as you change gear. So if you need to accelerate hard, reduce your acceleration before you do your seesaw. So I'm in second gear now, let's say I wanna get up to speed quickly. So I'm accelerating, now I reduce the power, so I'm not accelerating, then I do the seesaw and change gear. A Little bit of bite point, a little bit of gas, and then I can accelerate more if I need to, or stay at the same speed and go straight into the gear that's appropriate for this speed, which in this car is actually six. So clutch down off gas, into six, bit of bite point, bit of gas, and now I'm cruising along. Personally, I use a combination of all the methods. If I feel like I have low energy and I'm slowing down and I need extra engine braking, I'll press the clutch down slowly because I know I can get away with it. But if I need to press the clutch down quickly, then I do. If you think the video helps you drive a manual more smoothly, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links too 
Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, then Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy. And that takes away a massive stress from the owner of the car when you're using it to learn to drive. Via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, check out the link to confuse.com because you fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from different insurers to compare who's cheapest. And you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like, which is really handy when you're trying to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.